There are a few things as varied in this world as military spending. Some nations spend literally nothing and others spend hundreds of billions of dollars a year. Such a gross disparity naturally gets you thinking and makes you wonder just how much bang for your buck do these nations get, and quite literally in this case. It did last here anyway, and so here in the next 20 or so minutes, we're going to share with you the findings of our research into the matter as we compare the militaries of two countries with tiny budgets with the militaries of two countries with vast budgets. Oh, and a quick note for the sake of transparency before we get into this, we will be using figures from 2022 in today's video because it's the most recent year for which we could find a full and largely agreeable data set. With that in mind, let us begin. Okay, let's talk about War Thunder. This epic game is sponsoring today's video. Imagine dominating the skies or crushing the battlefield with tanks, planes, even ships. War Thunder has it all. And the best part, you don't need a supercomputer. You can play on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox will do. And still, the detail, the graphics, mind-blowing stuff. You can even see inside your tank when it gets hit. So a shell goes through, shrapnel goes everywhere, and you're like, oh, so that's how I got destroyed. It's very nice. There are three ways to play arcade for fast-paced action, realistic for balance, challenge, or simulator for hardcore pilots and tankers. Plus, customize your ride with killer skins and historical markings. And here's the kicker. It's free, but there's more. For new and returning players who haven't played in six months get a massive bonus pack. Premium vehicles, the exclusive Eagle of Valor decorator, 100,000 silver lions, and seven days of premium time. But hurry, it's for a limited time only. Just make sure to use the link in the video description or the pinned comment to sign up. Thank you to all that for sponsoring, and now back to it. We wanted to begin by looking at the military with the lowest budget, but unfortunately figuring out which nation that is proved to be rather difficult. As a world population review, from which we're getting our figures today, I reckon that Somalia spends both zero dollars on its military, which it also claims is somehow 20% of government spending. It also claims that Venezuela spends $4.7 million, a figure which not only seems really low, but is also somehow meant to be 0% of government spending. I guess I missed something and Venezuela has become infinitely wealthy. Reasoning that such results were likely indicative of an incomplete data set rather than reality, we instead moved up the list by a couple of mouse wheel turns to find some more modest military budgets that we felt more confident in. And that's where we found Liberia, which spends $17.8 million on its military, which equates to 1.27% of its GDP. So what do they get for their money? Well, in terms of equipment, it will probably come as no surprise to you to learn that the Armed Forces of Liberia, or AFL, isn't exactly strutting about with the latest and greatest gear. For small arms, they largely depend on a cache of old Eastern Bloc hand-me-downs gifted to them by Romania, with the AKM, MD-63, PK, and RPG-7 being particularly notable examples. In terms of vehicles, they seemingly have no tanks of any kind, with their only armored vehicles at all being between 7 and 12 straight Cougar PMVs gifted to them by the UAE in 2019, and 50 or so Osprey Mamba MK7s, which it began purchasing from South Africa in 2023. Both of these are rather modest wheeled armored personnel carriers able to protect their occupants from small arms fire and the odd mine, so long as it isn't too big, but that is about it. They do have a few aircraft too, specifically seven single-engine Cessnas of various models, which are used for transport and communications, two to Havilland Canada DHC-4s, which are also used for transport purposes, and a few old airliners, which are used for VR IP government transport, specifically a Boeing 707, a 727, and a BAC-11. As for helicopters, no, there, there are no helicopters. As for a navy, Liberia, also not there. Although it does have a Coast Guard, which operates two Defender-class boats that were donated by the US in 2011. In case this type isn't familiar to you, a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier, they are not, having a crew of four teeth in Liberian service, they each sport a single DSHK machine gun, which themselves are typically assumed to have been gifts from Romania. But just how many people don the camo BDUs for Liberia? Their equipment list might be a bit past it, but maybe Liberia isn't able to unleash such a vast human wave of modestly armed people upon its enemies that it inspires abject terror into its regional adversaries. Well, no, that's not the case. In no. 
instead, the AFL currently has no more than 2,000 members, barely a regiment or two by normal military formation sizes. As for what it does with those 2,000 members, the AFL makes modest contributions to various peacekeeping efforts all across Africa. The first undertaking, oh, is a platoon sized, i.e., 20 to 50 soldiers or so, contribution to the UN multi dimensional integrated stabilization mission in Mali, which, as well as being a mouthful, lasted from 2013 to 2023. Despite the modest size of their contingent, however, they did a cracking job, all things considered, with peacekeepers of other nationalities, often noting both the professionalism and commitment of their Liberian comrades. This was then followed up by a similarly sized deployment of the United Nations mission in South Sudan in 2019. This one's still ongoing, and again, the Liberians seem to be doing their country proud, as exemplified by nine of them being decorated for conduct most becoming in 2022. Let's now move on to look at the military of Albania, which despite being one of the poorest countries in Europe and an upper lower spender overall, still spends a simply vast sum of money on its military compared to Liberia, specifically $296.6 million, which we will call 16.5 times more for the sake of having a relatively round and easy number to work with. The figure is also a slightly larger share of GDP, specifically 1.58%. So with that said, just what does Albania get for its money? Well, not as much as you might first imagine, actually, because it turns out that militaries are really expensive. So for the Albanians, their 296 million equates to a very small military that has top shelf training and is equipped with largely modern gear, with the gaps being filled in with old stockpiled communist era backups. In a nutshell, Albania's approach to warfare is to accept the fact that its streets aren't exactly paved with gold and instead spend what money it does have on maintaining a modest cadre that on the individual level can keep up with those of any other member of NATO. As for exactly how small it is, the Albanian Armed Forces currently has roughly 8,500 active personnel and 2,000 reservists across all of its branches. This is huge compared to Liberia, but it's absolutely tiny by general European standards, with the big boys of the continent, Germany and the UK, having around 210 and 170,000 respectively, again combining both active and reserve personnel. In terms of equipment, the standard service rifle is still the ASH-78 communist era indigenous AK variant that could trace its lineage back to the Type 3 variant of the original AK-47. It, however, is supplemented with much more advanced foreign weaponry as than when they were able to, with a slow move being made to eventually fully transition to using them as service weapons, with examples being the Beretta ARX-160 and the Colt M4A1. As a very general rule for how they spread out their rifles, think of it like this. They use the AK when at home and use the foreign stuff when deployed, where having a more modern rifle is not only most big and clever on the staying alive level, but also allows them to use standard NATO ammunition and thus ease logistical concerns. A similar state exists with most of their small arms, for example. When it comes to sniper rifles, the communist era Dragunov is still the service weapon, but it is supplemented by the Finnish Sarko TRG, and in terms of machine guns, the communist era RPD and RPK are still the go-to, but they are slowly being replaced by the German MG4 and MG5. And again, it's the same for anti-tank weaponry. They still have loads of Tip 57s in indigenous variants of the RPG-7, but they also have got their hands on a few American stingers and javelins. In terms of vehicles, the move away from from old communist era gear has been a touch more successful. British Land Rover Defenders and German Mercedes G Wagons are now the go to in the light utility role, and American M1114 Humvees are used when a people mover with a bit of armor is needed. In fact, the only time you'll find anything communist at all is when you look at the properly armored stuff, with 17 ex East German BMP 1s being kept in service until they reach inoperability, and 40 Chinese Type 59 tanks being kept ready to go but not proactively being used just in case something major kicks off. A notable gap in their capabilities, however, is their air force, which, in arguably quite a prudent move, the Albanian government has largely opted not to bother with, instead just outsourcing their aerial capabilities to their allies and using the money saved to beef up their ground forces. As a result, Albania operates no manned fixed-wing aircraft, but does operate an eclectic mix of light utility helicopters such as the American Bell 206 and the French Eurocopter AS-532, of which they have seven and four respectively. They do have a few fixed-winged UAVs, however, currently having six American RQ-20 Pumas and three Turkish Bayer Reactor TV-2s in their inventory. They also applied similar logic to their navy. Like with their air force, they do technically have one, but in reality, it's a token effort, with the vast majority of their ships instead 
said belonging to their modestly sized but by all accounts perfectly competent coast guard with examples being 12 chinese type 062 gunboats left over from the communist days and four much more modern Darman stand 4207 patrol vessels that were built indigenously with some assistance from the dutch as for what it does with all of that, the Albanian military has actually seen its fair share of deployments in recent years, having committed modest numbers of troops to Afghanistan as well as to peacekeeping forces in the Ivory Coast, Liberia, and Kosovo. They even sent 240 troops to the 2003 invasion of Iraq, with them remaining in the country until 2008. As we said back in the introduction, for our third entry today, we're going to move on and look at one of the big boys of the military world to see how things are done on the other end of the scale. Specifically, let's look at China. But just how big is their budget? Well, put it this way, take Albania's budget and pop three zeros on the end of it. Because whereas Albania spends 296 million on its military, China spends 298 billion on its military. Or put it another way, for every one dollar that Albania spends, China spends over a thousand dollars. Thanks to this vast budget then, the byword for China in this chapter, perhaps unsurprisingly, is bigger. This is exemplified by troop numbers alone, because China currently has over 2.5 million soldiers on the books across all branches of its military, split between a little over 2 million active troops and a smidge over half a million reservists. As for their infantry equipment, we'll cover it double quick, as we have a lot to discuss in this chapter, but just know that it's all indigenously made, in stark contrast to the other militaries we've looked at thus far, and according to most analysts, it is all typically decent stuff easily on par with the gear from any other major military. They also have a big variety in what they use, so a full and comprehensive list just won't be possible today. But to give you an idea of the standard stuff, just so you have a picture in your minds, consider things like the Type 92 pistol, Type 95 rifle, Type 88 sniper rifle, Type 88 machine gun, Type 98 rocket launcher, and you more or less get the idea. Then we get to something really different vehicles. Consider the fact that up until this point, we were dealing with countries that either had no tanks or a handful of old obsolescent tanks, and then further consider the fact that China has over 5,000 tanks included within is 2,500 Type 96s and 1,300 Type 99s, both of which are generally agreed upon as being competitive with basically any other tank out there today. And you're probably starting to get an idea of how vast the gulf in capabilities between China and somewhere like Albania is. And then there's the Navy, because not only does it actually have one, but it also has the largest navy on Earth by number of hulls period, with 680 ships currently in service. Included in this figure are three aircraft carriers, the latest one of which, the Type 003 Fujian, likely cost more than the entire yearly budget of the other two nations featured in this video thus far combined. Exact figures are hard to come by, as Beijing isn't exactly forthcoming with such information, but most estimates by Western analysts place the figure of being happily into the many billions. As for its air force, China currently has an estimated 3,500 aircraft, included among which is everything from the J-7, a Cold War-era Soviet MiG-21 that has major upgrades to make it competitive in the 21st century, of which it has 289, and the J-20, a seemingly top-of-the-line stealth fighter that could likely go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an F-22 or F-35, of which it has at least 210. We stress the likely word, however, as that claim is a touch contentious and mercifully hasn't had to be put to the test in the real world yet. China also has a whole other capability that no other country we've discussed yet does, nuclear weapons. They also have very good nuclear weapons too. We aren't talking about a few diddly A-bombs they pumped out just for the sake of bragging rights. We're talking about the DF-41, an ICBM with a range of maybe as much as 15,000 kilometers that packs as many as 10 individual warheads, and the JL-3, an ICBM with an estimated range of 10,000 kilometers that carries three individual warheads. And thanks to it being carried aboard the Type 094 submarine, the JL-3 can be targeted anywhere in the world. All in all, as things stand today, China has between four and five hundred warheads by most estimates. Isn't it mad the difference a few zeros can make?
Thanks to China being the second largest military spender in the world, there is only one country we can turn our gaze to for our final entry, the United States. But if you happen to be thinking this chapter is just going to be China but a bit more, worry not, because while it might only be one place above China, the amount of money the US spends on its military and the bang it gets for its buck as a result is simply in another borderline unfathomable league to that of China. As for the exact number, that would be 811 billion dollars, which equates to 37% of the entire world's military spending. Weirdly, however, this is actually the first time in the video when we have seen a lesser number of soldiers for a higher budget, with the US only having a total of 2.2 million soldiers. So what gives? Well, the answer in a nutshell is that the US military is far more about fielding advanced technologies than it is about the amount of bodies and uniforms. And as a result, you will generally find the best and most expensive technology that is possible to procure across every single one of its branches. In explaining this, however, we'll blast through small arms double quick once again, because while we want to give you a consistent frame of reference with our other chapters, a rifle is a rifle at the end of the day. And the American Americans have blessed us with far more exciting kit to walk at. For rifles, they near universally use the AR-15 derived designs, M16s, M4s and the like, with the only real exception being the FN SCAR that pops up from time to time. For pistols, they carry things like the M17, blah blah blah, you get the idea, all modern and advanced stuff. Their anti-tank weaponry, however, well that is of note, because you know the Javelin? that launcher that Albania have just a few knocking about of? Well, the US has up to 10,000 of them. And then we get to the vehicles, and this is where things get really crazy, because remember when we said that China had roughly 5,000 tanks, around 3,800 of which were the really good ones? Well, yeah. The US has over 4,500 of a single very good variant, the mighty M1 Abrams. As for their other vehicles, let's just rattle some figures off post haste, because there is far too much for us to be able to go into detail on them. There's the M1120 Striker IFE, 4,169 in infantry, the M2 and M3 Bradley IFV, roughly 4,500 on the books. The M113 APC, nearly 15,000 of them in both active service and in storage. The MATV MRAP, 5,641. The Humvee Light Utility Vehicle, give or take 125 thousand of those. FMTV trucks, just shy of 109,000 of them. And bear in mind, that was a far from comprehensive list. Not but a spattering to give you a general idea of what the US is up to. And then we get to their Air Force, which has roughly 5,500 aircraft in inventory, included among which are the insanely capable F-22 Raptor, of which they have 186, the F-16 Fighting Falcon, of which they have 738, and the A-10 Thunderbolt, of which they have 270. Further to just them, however, they also are the only nation on Earth to field a stealth bomber in the form of the B-2 Spirit, of which they currently have 19. There's no two ways about it. The US's aerial capabilities are legitimately terrifying. And don't forget, we started off this video looking at nations that in real terms didn't have air forces. Oh, one more thing. This number of aircraft, perhaps obviously, also makes the US Air Force the biggest air force on Earth. And so you might be thinking, well, what's the second biggest air force? Well, it's not China. Instead, it would actually be the US Navy, which has a little over 4,000 aircraft. And speaking of the Navy, as we alluded to in the last chapter, the US does have a smaller Navy than China by number of hulls, but they do have more of the stuff that really matters in a war. Take aircraft carriers as an example. The US has 11 compared to China's three, and they're all top of the line super carriers, which China's absolutely are not. And then we get to the nukes, of which the US has a little over 5,000 compared to China's four to five hundred. But do note, the US isn't actually the biggest nuclear power, as Russia pips them in number of warheads with a total of 5,500 or so. This isn't to say Russia is a rival to the US, mind you. This is literally the only thing that they top the US in. So yeah, that's what an $800 billion military looks like. Equal parts, awe-inspiring and terrifying. Don't forget to check out War Thunder today's sponsor. Use my link for that sweet bonus pack. Thank you again to them for sponsoring, and thank you for watching.